Hello World Wide Web, I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality who insists on reviewing dinosaur movies around Christmas time. And, and this makes three at least a respectable dino December with Triassic Hunt. A sequel to the asylum flick Triassic World! Yes, they made a sequel to a mockbuster. A genre of film defined not by its story, but of the stories it's riding the coattails of. And Triassic World was of course a mockbuster of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. But the problem was that, that was scheduled to come out around the same time as Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and then that got shifted around a bit, so by the time that actually came out, the Asylum had to throw together this. Triassic Hunt, where we find out, hey, those dinosaurs they made in Triassic World, well, they made some more, and oh, wouldn't you know it, they escaped! And now a team of highly skilled soldiers must go in and take them out in a Triassic Hunt. And at least they aren't doing the exact same thing as the actual franchise and trying to go all kumbaya with prehistoric mutant monsters. But nevertheless, let's take a look at Triassic Hunt. Because I just can't seem to look away. As is tradition, for our opening credits, the Asylum blesses up with dramatic music and artistically edited clips of a completely different movie. And when the events proper start, we are quickly introduced to Lewis, played by Ramiro Leal, driving a shipment for Linnea Quigley, who plays the role of Simone. The cargo in question is being guarded by Harrison Paul, played by Mark Ferguson, and as it keeps growling, he asks Elaine, played by Christy Krueger, just what the hell it is. Uh, not for you to worry about. Oh, well, when you open with stuff like that, I already know it's gonna come back to bite you in the ass. Figuratively and literally. Because, oh, would you look at that! The truck suddenly encounters turbulence! As they just so happen to be transporting dinosaurs! Super enhanced Allosaurus specimens! And the car crashes! With the dinosaurs on the loose, nobody knows if they are safe. But have no fear, the tattooed badass can save the day! You have to Give me your head, come on! Or die a horribly painful death being eaten alive by dinosaurs. Ah, oh, damn, now we're gonna need a new protagonist. So the remaining people are terrified! They are trapped in the car with dinosaurs waiting just outside. But have no fear, they only need to wait out the rendering budget so the monsters can disappear. But Simone refuses to allow the dinosaurs to escape. I think it's time to call in your team. And that's over. So they call in the A-Team! Or, you know, at, at the very least, A-Team. Black Ops mercenaries in training, such as Joy Harland, played by Sienna Farrell. How many do you need? Full team. Copy that. Four of us. Negative. Five of you. And that includes Deacon. Oh great, the team's already splintering with drama and they ain't even been eaten by dinosaurs yet. So they're gonna load up and head down there at once! Later, first we gotta check in with how Elaine is holding up. This is different. They're usually nocturnal. You've seen this before. A lab accident, once. Which is one of many, many instances where the movie just stops and is like, Hey guys, just so you know, this is a sequel to another Asylum movie. Check it out, we spent way more money on the effects than that one. Elaine explains that these escaped enhanced dinosaurs are the result of a previous movie about creating enhanced dinosaurs. And everything went tits up, and no matter how hard they tried, the guards just couldn't contain Super Allosaurus with flashlights alone. I never anticipated that it would be worse. Maybe, but I'm betting this time around it's going to be mostly off screen and sound effects. Well, Lewis has heard enough. There are escaped dinosaurs, malleable, yes, but dangerous. So no matter what, they must recover them before they expand into a more populated area and the movie becomes far too expensive to shoot. Pack up, let's go. What about your team of buddies? They're on their way. Now, come on, this is the asylum. They, they can't do big, huge crowds with hundreds of extras, but a ragtag group of C-list actors is well within their means. However, secret secrets are going on at the Triassic Corporate Headquarters, where we meet Jordan Friedman, played by Michael Paré. Just what is he up to? You just follow the link I sent you and wait for my announcement. Oh, he's expanding into live streaming on Twitch as well. So let's return to Lewis and company. They're setting up a little forward operating base for the purposes of this mission. His team hasn't shown up yet, but Simone is already like, well, 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 the information is need to know, and they don't need to know a fucking thing. But Elaine believes that knowing a little might help them actually succeed in catching the dinosaurs, or, you know, a 
not die. On that note, let's meet the Badass Brigade. Joy, Gordon, played by Kevin Keeling, Carl, played by Todd Carner, and Nick, played by William John. Their first obstacle, a minor pile of rubble in the road. But as they work to clear it... A dinosaur suddenly drops from the sky and attacks! Not only that, it is impervious to gunfire! Marking two things they should have just told them because they were going to figure that out anyway. Scaring the invulnerable killing machine away with their importance, the heroes enter the forward operating base. Leaving the door wide open, but don't worry about that. Seriously, it affects nothing. More importantly, Deacon has arrived. After the fact that Joy still didn't invite him along. Showing he's a total badass, he slaps an empty mag into his gun and doesn't even pull the charging handle. Played by Sam Schweikert, he sneaks up on an unsuspecting door. It turns out it leads to a building. The very building that this movie is taking place in. We didn't want you here. It wasn't your decision to make, so I'm here now. Then try to stick around this time and don't leave anyone behind. It's kind of hard to hold that over his head after you just literally did the same to him just now, but woo, drama. That is so much more important than bulletproof dinosaurs. Point is, everyone's here so they can get the 411 on the situation. Hey gang, you're hunting dinosaurs today. Two of them specifically, genetically modified, bulletproof, allosaurus super soldiers that if they get out, might kill lots of innocent people. So don't let that happen, Kay. Also, they're expensive. You are to only use deadly force as a last resort. Instead, you'll be using the specially designed AR-15s with a high-impact tranquilizer round. Uh, couldn't you have at least sprung for the M16? Why are we outfitting military badasses with civilian weaponry? AR-15, what? We're hunting deer? Oh, no, 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 no. Most places won't even let you go out hunting with an AR-15 if you're going for deer. The round's far too weak. You're more likely to just wound the poor animal. You need something higher caliber to get the job done reliably. Sir, you know we work best with our own weapons. Our own weapons that we just used on these creatures, and, uh, they didn't do shit. But you know what they say, try, try again. No, I don't like this one bit. It's not fear to like. It's a goddamn asylum movie. So they grab their AR-15s that look suspiciously like AK-47s and split into two groups to go on a Triassic hunt. But what's this? It turns out Simone is working together with Jordan! We worked too long and too hard to just watch this thing fail. Meaning the secrets she's keeping from the group are actually even more secret than previously imagined. Anyway, Red Team presses on hunting the dinosaurs, as you do. But wait, there's a sudden scream. Heading in to investigate, they find nobody. But they do find a bloody handprint on the wall. Did they eat them? I don't know. But if this is human blood, there's no way they survived. But if it's chicken blood, they might just be trying to defeat the dinosaurs with tribal magic, I don't know. Sensing there may be danger, they decide, hey, let's split up. That way Gordon can head to the roof for a sniper fun time, while Nick stays, um, uh, inside, where Gordon can't possibly cover him. He is a sniper. That's why he's here. Uh, yeah, but the, the, the dinosaur was in the basement. While they dick around, what exactly is the evil Mr. Friedman doing with the escaped dinosaur situation? Capitalizing on it! You see, the dinosaurs versus special operatives was his plan all along. An exhibition of the beasts so that he may sell them to the highest bidder, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom style! If you watch on your computer screen, you will see live and in real time just how valuable an asset this is. Enjoy the show. Breaking into the illicit market of live streams. And hey, Jordan, the, the, the Dinosaurs vs. Special Operatives show is great and all. Nice angle. But if you really want to make some money doing this stuff, may I suggest you break out the hot tub? Or at the very least, paint your tits and call it art. Now, they might have blown 90% of the dinosaur effects budget in the last movie, but they can still imply the existence of dinosaurs in this one. Look! Deacon finds broken glass. Freshly broken glass. Clear dinosaur behavior. That and the dinosaur footprint is pretty sus. But Elaine feels the soldiers' chances will be better if they know what is really going on. Which Simone really doesn't want getting out. One of them is pregnant. Which will help the soldiers! 
somehow, I, I don't know, maybe they can lie in wait to ambush one of them as they browse for maternity clothes. Doesn't that make the assets more valuable? Of course it does. Or avoid the low income parts of the building. Seriously, how does this help at all? Transporting two Allosauruses to Costa Rica is tough enough, let alone two with an egg. An egg? No, not an egg. Nothing anyone has even seen before. Spoiler alert, it's an egg. But the dinosaurs being that much more valuable was a secret, and therefore important. Go for Deacon. Deacon here. One of them might be pregnant. Is that supposed to mean something? But even the soldiers aren't pretending to be impressed with this information whatsoever. Somewhat more important for their survival is when Nick discovers a poor civilian barely alive. Elaine realizes it must be a trap, for you see, in the previous movie, the dinosaurs exhibited advanced tactical deductive capabilities. Information far more important than being late on your cycle. Either way, Nick barely manages to escape in time. So now it's time to check on his partner they let wander off. No one. Oh, I found the other one. That's amazing. No one managed to notice the giant fucking Allosaurus just standing there on top of the building. And wouldn't you know it, badass sniper bro has butterfingers and dropped his gun. But have no fear, the building is actually incredibly small. Or the asylum ain't splurging for more sets than it has to. And Nick is able to get up there in mere moments to help his partner out. Two. One. Damn it. Where'd it go? Ah, right, guys, listen, we can only afford to render so much. I mean, what's the logical explanation here? A huge Allosaurus just jumped off the building without anyone noticing anything whatsoever? But Elaine believes this was a diversion, and he's biding his time for the perfect opportunity to strike. Ignoring the fact, of course, that this is a bulletproof Allosaurus genius, but never mind that. So they are ordered to hide. It could be anywhere. Take cover and wait. Even better, their one and only weapon against this thing is also useless. Which does beg the question why this thing doesn't just eat them right now. Elaine tells them, aim for the nose. It's the softest part. But they fail anyway. We lost it, got away. What do you mean you lost it? I mean, what was I supposed to do? The thing just slipped out of ring. See, these guys are absolutely terrible at keeping track of dinosaurs, but you know what they're good at? Drama. Deacon says, hey, this seems like a good spot to stop for a while. For dinosaurs. And so they do. Which gives Joy the opportunity to tear him a new asshole over how he betrayed her, leaving her for dead. Deacon's like, uh, you see, I was told you were dead. But she's like, I was just undercover and you should have known that. You know what? Hey, you two knock it off. We're not here for this. We're here to catch dinosaurs. And you're here to like this video and subscribe. Assuming YouTube is actually going to show this to any more than like 5% of my own subscribers. But it's time to get the plot moving, I guess, as the sniper just so happens to spot one of the Allosaurus in a dimly lit window. Taking the shot, the beast is filled. Maybe all the rest of the team is kind of surprised the invulnerable, unkillable genius monster managed to be taken out so easily. <laughs> because it was a trap and it grabs Deacon. Right after Joy was done telling him how much of a fuck nugget he is. Shame. But they heroically fight off the dinosaur to save Deacon for a couple of seconds before it takes Deacon anyway. This is a tragedy. I mean, unless you're banking on these things, killing them quickly and effectively for profit, in that case, you're golden. She's ahead of schedule. Pick up the pace. Pick up what? You're already going faster than you thought you'd be, and suddenly that's not good enough? But while bad guy is very happy with the bids coming in, at a piddly ass 700 million, Elaine says that there are more secrets of the dinosaurs that they have yet to reveal. But to be fair, this time it's actually useful. Hey gang, these dinosaurs just so happen to have explosives implanted into their brains as a failsafe. How convenient. When were you gonna tell me that they have bombs in their brain? Hopefully never. Which Simone could have told them, but didn't, because the dinosaurs are just far too valuable. And she's trying to kill them all, but details, details. Unless absolutely necessary, we don't tell them. It's too late. 
Copy that. And maybe next time discuss your secret meeting somewhere away from the public voice channel. But they still need the code and the frequency, and uh, uh, it's complicated. Team? Do it and you're fired. And you lose your shares too. Has this movie spent any of Quigley's screen time not trying to make Simone look as evil as possible? So as Elaine tells everyone, Simone tells her she will rot in hell for this. So great, they got that secret dino brain exploding code. But how to use it? Well, it just so happens that Carl is their handy dandy tech specialist. How convenient. They could just utilize that just recently established radio tower on this building to transmit the signal, blow up the dinosaurs, and save the day. But wait, Simone informs Jordan about this turn of events, and he immediately pulls out of his ass a failsafe to the failsafe. I'm going to add a randomizer. The frequency will change every 15 minutes. I should have thought of that in the beginning. It's going to have to have the dinosaurs shut down a bit for the firmware update. And it just so happens that Carl's sonic gun can cause pain to the dinosaurs, allowing him to work in relative safety. Also, no one else gets the sonic gun, and we never bring up its usefulness again. Right now, Joy is too busy setting dino traps. But wait! Deacon's communicator has come back online! Tracking its location, Joy heads back inside with Nick to find him. Which they do. But this is a bad spot. Not to worry, she can get their attention, then run the three-scene transition back out of the basement and up to the roof where she set those traps. But first... Nick! Where are you going? Distract them! Distract them from from chasing Joy towards the traps she set? That that's not helping, Nick! Especially when his distracting involves him losing his gun, running in the corner, and needing to fend off the dinosaur by punching it in the face! So Joy has to head right the fuck back down there to save Nick from his own stupid decisions. Nick! Great job, Nick. Now it's gone off somewhere else. Maybe around the forward operating base. Maybe. Uh, there's growls and stuff, but nothing ever comes of it. Anyway, Joy has to patch up Nick real quick and get back in the fray. Remembering, oh yeah, we were supposed to save Deacon. Hey, head back to the basement and see, uh, yeah, they're, they're eating Deacon. Uh, and then they attack! <laughs> Okay, super bulletproof scales or not, having a desert eagle go off in your face should have been at least disorienting from the muzzle flash alone. Tell me it was the male. Tell me you shot the male. We need the female alive. Oh, don't worry. They're not even mildly perturbed. Thus, Joy and Nick teleport outside and hide for cover in a convenient van we never established before now, but will prove to be very important. They believe themselves to be safe. Until one of the dinosaurs attack and starts making calls. Get out of there now! She's calling the other one! They have lured you to where they want you! I repeat, get out now! But Lord, they're, they're invincible, carnivorous giants! They could easily kill them all at any moment! Why won't they? So I must run! Fleeing back into the building they just teleported out of! They head up the stairs and meet back up with Gordon, with no idea what to do now. Is there anything you haven't told us that could help us with these things? Well, it's about time for the next uh, shocking revelation to come out. Thus Elaine spills the beans that the dinosaurs are actually super intelligent, tactical, cunning, and yeah, they grew them that way. So uh, thanks for the lore, I guess. So we're gonna need something else if we're gonna have the shocking revelation for Act 3. Simone's phone, revealing that she was actually trying to kill them all for profit. I, I, I mean, we knew this for a while, but it's news to them. Hearing that his team was merely the targets for this test run, Lewis has heard enough. Elaine's mutant monster project didn't go wrong. This was the intention the entire time. How does he know? Well, he just so happened to find a, a Bluetooth earbud thingamajig in the opening? Yeah. Well, it's a receiver for an explosive, which is how the dinosaurs escaped in the opening. Ignoring, of course, that the dinosaurs broke out on their own and there was no explosion. So the new mission is eliminate the dinosaurs in this Triassic hunt. So the team considers their circumstances. Those dinosaurs could easily torn us out of that van. I want to know why they didn't. What, well, you never heard of plot armor? Heading out, back to the basement, Nick discovers the shocking truth. The dinosaurs have been using Deacon's communicator to listen in on the comms! That's right! They understand English. And that's how they knew just what to do. 
In theory, uh, their tactics didn't seem all that impressive, but either way, they move on, and Nick continues to check out some important-looking files that could give them a clue as to what to do. Don't blow the dinosaurs! Repeat! Whoa! It's not that kind of movie! But this factory is an ammonium nitrate factory! If to blow the C4, it'll activate the chemical and blow the half the state! Dude! If a microscopic speck of C4 in the brain is enough to do that, then all that gunfire going off should have done that ages ago. But wouldn't you know it, Carl just finished setting up the dino brain blower beam right before being eaten alive. And it's gonna take some time to get going. Which is a crisis situation, I guess? I mean, they already established that they were gonna set that randomizer and it was gonna be pointless anyway. Frequency randomizer failed. Connection was lost. Never mind. But Nick rushes from the basement to the roof just in time to turn it off. Ish. I mean, the dino brains didn't blow, but it did go off. It just didn't work. We should all be dead right now. Yeah, but the movie's still got like 15 minutes left, so fuck it. So we need a new crisis situation. Damn it, Jamal, you couldn't wait. Contingency? What is this? Drone strike? To take out the dinosaurs? No. Us. Well, if an explosion is supposed to cause that block-leveling mushroom cloud, um, how exactly are the dinosaurs supposed to survive that? So they must hurry. Nick is like, hey, Joy, you ain't been doing anything for the last few scenes. Maybe you could head out to the van I said was so important. Turns out, hey, that's where the dinosaurs were keeping the egg. So when Elaine said earlier... They have lured you to where they want to... The dinosaurs wanted to herd them into their nest. And then... Try to break in, but not try to break in because they didn't want to damage their... They didn't want to protect their own... I... Okay, what is going on? The point is, Joy has the egg and uses it to lure the male. Right in front of the sniper! Yes! <laughs> the male is down! And you can tell we're deep in Act 3 because bullets suddenly work now! Sometimes! But even worse, seeing that the invulnerable dinosaurs are in fact merely heavily armored, the viewers rescind their super chats, leaving Jordan with but one option. Activate clean sweep. A drone strike. Hey, wait a minute, weren't they already doing that? Yeah, let's have one more shocking revelation for the road. Elaine is actually not a lovable scientist who only made super strong, super intelligent dinosaur soldiers for the betterment of mankind, and actually an evil scientist who created super smart and vulnerable dinosaur soldiers for the destruction of mankind. So everything's gone tits up real fast. But on the ground, we still got that last dinosaur to deal with. Nick is cornered and as good as dead. But wait, Gordon calls it up on the hand of intercom that we never knew about before now. Like, hey, dino, um, listen, we have your egg. So why don't you come get it where Joy is? The traps are still set up and the explosives are alive and ready. So are explosives OK or aren't they? But Elaine pops in like, surprise, I'm the bad guy. But what's this? Nick slides in with his sword, diffusing the situation. Until a dinosaur shows up and eats Elaine! I know you can hear me, whoever you are. And then Joy calls up Jordan. Don't ask me how, they never show her getting her phone or even knowing what number to call. It does give us a chance for Jordan to point out that Operation Clean Sweep is a fail-safe, fail-safe, fail-safe! And if the drones don't get to do their job of heading to carpet bomb the area and kill the dinosaurs, they will turn around and bomb the Triassic Research Headquarters! Something about not wanting secrets to get out and being incredibly shit at making plans. Well, Joy doesn't care. Luring the dino, stomping the egg, and engaging the final battle. Okay, so today we learned that bulletproof does not mean swordproof. Or explosion proof, uh, depending on the scene. Because while the dino manages to shake off that blast once Joy and Gordon get her in position to set off the other explosion, well, back it up, boys, she won. Therefore, happy ending! Jordan is blown up by his own drones! And everyone else is well and truly dead. Except for Joy and Gordon, I suppose. What now? I think I'm just gonna watch the sunset.
They just ended on the asylum tradition of talking about an interesting looking scene without us ever actually seeing it. Anyway, that was Triassic Hunt. Eh? Could have been better, could have been worse. is isn't anything to write home about. Jurassic Hunt has a lot of ideas, but man, it is so haphazardly tossed together, its plot is at best nonsensical, and at worst, pointless. The basic setup isn't terrible, super dinosaurs escape, track them down, it's just all the explanations around it that seek to add danger or mystery to the situation that absolutely fail to deliver. The bad blood between Joy and Deacon wasn't particularly interesting, and the movie changing its mind shot by shot as to what does and does not work to take out the dinos, or what is or is not a clear and present danger, is really coming off like they were just shooting from the hip here the whole time. The acting and presentation, though, are at least asylum grade. Okay performances mixed with some overacting and a couple much more famous and much older actors trying to give the film a sense of legitimacy. The shots are clear and clean for the most part, but the lack of variety in sets combined to the plot where everyone runs in circles for 80 minutes isn't doing the presentation any favors. At the end of the day, Jurassic Hunt is a pretty standard asylum fare. The acting is basic, the writing is there by obligation alone, and the effects are ass. Nothing to get invested in, but at least we can technically call it a movie. Coming in at two dome dynamite duds out of five. It's also of note to be the only Linnea Quigley movie I've seen where she keeps her clothes on the entire time. Yes, I do consider that a mark against it. Thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember, the Asylum can make sequels to its blockbusters, but still hasn't made one for Battle Star Wars. Because I guess they hate me. Don't blow the dinosaurs! And that concludes Dino December 2023. But why stop there? We've also got. Well, that's great. YouTube's not even showing me my own videos anymore. Well, uh, here's a couple. I hope they're relevant. And, uh, happy Dino December to you, and a happy new year.